Hello guys, my name is Rock and Roll Snaggletooth. I'm going to be doing a retrospective on Ripping Corpse, the first three demos and the full length and the unreleased album. Now, Ripping Corpse was started in 1987. The name deprived some a creator song off Pleasure to Kill called Ripping Corpse. The band originally started out as a four piece with Scott Ruth on vocals, Dave Bizzagotti on bass, Brandon Thomas on drums, and Sean Kelly on guitars. This would eventually form the demo lineup for the first demo. Death Warned Over is a demo, in my opinion, that kind of just falls in the traditional 80s thrash meets death metal. Like, back at this time, you know, you had bands such as Creator, obviously that's a thrash band, but Creator, Death, you know, um, Destruction, and Slayer. I feel like I could hear a lot of those influences implemented in this demo. Um, there's a few songs that will be featured on the album, like Dreaming with the Dead, which was... Recorded, di it's, it's weird because if you listen to the demo version, it sounds way different than the album version because there's a chorus in the demo version instead of the album version. Um, this demo, in my opinion, is pretty solid for a new band. I mean, I'm not going to bitch and complain about the production because the production, it's a demo. What do you expect? It's not going to be great quality. Um... But this demo is surprisingly kind of like the same as a lot of other Death Rash bands that were coming out at the time, like Protector and Incubus and a lot of those bands, even Sadus at the time. Um, which leads us to our second demo. Splattered Remains. Now, this demo is definitely different from the last one. I mean, Splattered Remains is a demo that's like has songs like Rift of Hate, Exhumation Day, Anti God, Deeper Demons, um, Stone Garden. Like those songs, I feel show more what direction they were going to move into. Um, they got signed to a um, demo label for this only this only this demo, which was called Underground Records. They were a label that helped out um, Relapse in their early stages, um, and then eventually a year later they released it as a uh, actual like demo. And so, basically, they released that, and they did a few shows. They did their first show with Creator um, and Immolation and Revenant, which was basically when Morbid Angel was actually um, was was about to record Ultras of Madness. This was, I believe, October or November of '88, and they were still touring, and they weren't signed yet until like later on, and they did that. Show. They did a show with Creator, they did a show with Entombed, I believe at the time, and Death and Devastation. They did a few shows in the Tri-State area, mainly like in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, um, like anywhere in the Tri-State area pretty much. They were getting more well known at the time, and this is what leads us into the third demo. The nineteen ninety demo. Okay, around this time between eighty nine and nineteen ninety, they uh, they added a, another guitarist by the name of Eric Rutain. 
Now, this was Sean's good friend. Uh, Eric was pretty, it was a really good guitar player at the time. And so Eric pretty much added a lot of the technicality that um, Ripping Corpse are well known for. And in a sense, like you hear it in a lot of songs, such as like uh, Glorious Depravity and Seduction on the Innocent, of the Innocent on this demo. Um, and the one thing you hear a lot of on this is like the way they structure the chords and a lot of the other things on this is way different than a lot of the demos at the time because you know you heard Cannibal Corpse was out then. Um, who else without that? Deicide, um, Atrocity, Nocturnus. And I hear a lot of that influence implemented in this demo. And this is the same demo that got signed by to Craze Maze Records, which was a label at the time that was a, was a um, side label of Under One Flag Records, which was a uh, label that did, made Bathory's first few records, um, who else, they uh, helped out um, Edge of Sanity, they, uh, they've done a lot of other works outside of that, but they were making an American office called Craze Maze, and they were signed to that label, and they were went in the studio to make a legendary record. Dreaming with the Dead. Now... There's nothing more to say about this record. It's so amazing. Like, every way, shape, and form about it. Like, the musicianship shines. The vocals are not even your stereotypical death metal vocals. It kind of is like a mixture of like Brett Hoffman meets John Tardy with some hardcore influence. Like, this album it is an array of different things. Like, I hear a lot of grindcore elements. I hear a lot of black metal elements. I hear a lot of, um, I hear a lot of death metal and thrash metal elements, um, and well, you hear some black metal and uh, grindcore elements, not that much, but you but you hear it a lot. And they uh, they really have technical strong su song structure, and um, the riffs are way beyond your stereotypical like fucking boring death metal. Like there's like there's bands out there that make riffs that are just technical just to be technical but like the songs off this like chucking pus sweetness um deeper demons everything off this album kicks ass beginning to end it's nothing weak about it it's always like catchy as hell i could always listen to this record and never get bored with it you could put this on loop over and over and over again and there's nothing that's gonna bore me about it um the delivery of the guitars and the drums are vicious as hell. Such as like tracks as like Dreaming with the Dead, where they fixed and changed a few of the lyrics. Um, and the guitar work is just unbelievable. Like this, they have like weird parts where they have riffs and they have like bizarre solos that come in at times, and it's kind of different because like you hear that in like a lot of other newer bands but they weren't doing it like ripping corpse it's like the one band that nobody nobody not even if you tried and there's some bands that tried it but they weren't coming close to that that tried to sound like ripping corpse or do that type of style like this band was influential to such bands as like suffocation immolation shoot it had an influence on brutal death metal too um which is surprising enough and you have to admit that like Bands such as like Ripping Corpse, Atrocity, and even some Demi Lich at times has a def definite impact because there's bands that kind of fuck it up that try to be technical and just basically make like jarring as fuck riffs, but this band made amazing music. And what sucks about this though is getting back to the sad part about this band. The band broke up because of the m label going bankrupt at the time and they were about to record a second record and that second record never came through because of the fact that the label went bankrupt and another sad thing about the dreaming album is 
they had exhumation day, but at the time the label didn't want to uh, didn't want to put down the album because of controversy. So at the time, because the label didn't want to deal with the pressure of them of like parents being mad at like, oh, you know, you're writing this, this, and this, because exhumation day. I mean, I will admit the lyrics are pretty gruesome to a point, but. Now, looking back on it, I think it's kind of ridiculous. And I think the fact is that, like, there were problems with the label. The label went bankrupt, and pretty much Ripping Corpse was stuck with his contract. And so what happened is Eric went off to go to Morbid Angel to fill in uh, Richard Burnell's spot in uh, Morbid because at the same time, Richard Burnell left Morbid Angel uh, for some weird reason. I don't know why. Uh, if you know, comment down below if why you left. And rest in peace, Richard. Um, they went on to go form Dim Mac, and so pretty much by '93 or '95, the band pretty much disbanded, and Ripping Corpse was no more. You can, uh, you actually can find a uh, the unreleased demo on YouTube, but uh, good luck trying to find that. It's like hidden almost in the most hardest spot to find. But um, Ripping Corpse will forever have an impact on death metal, in my opinion. It's like sad to see that a lot of people that are into death metal don't know this band as well, and especially this classic, underrated gem of a death metal album. Like, you guys could probably still find it, but actually, funny enough, Relapse was supposed to reissue Dreaming with the Dead, but unfortunately, Craze Maze label deal pretty much didn't wouldn't allow them to re remaster or like reissue the album. I'm Rock and Roll Tooth, and I am signing off.